Welcome back, everyone, to our series, Love in the Parsha. And welcome back, Rachel. This week, we are going to talk about the role of love in Parshat Vayishlach. And in this case, love really is presented in its, in a lack of a better term, its darkness. Rachel, we see Shechem. He takes Dina. And then all of a sudden, the Torah tells us that he lo- he comes to love her. Why is it that the Torah frames the rape of Dina in terms of love? If we did that today, we'd be criticized. <laughs> Why does the Torah present it that way? So the truth is that I think the answer has two layers. One is what it appears like as you read it. And one is the ironic layer, the ironic meaning of it, or the mockery, in a sense, of calling that love that you only understand when you finish the story. So let me start with the first um, answer. When you read the story of Shechem taking Dina and raping her, what you're seeing is an echo of a theme that started already much, much, much earlier in the book of Genesis. It started in the generation that preceded the, the Mabul. The flood. In that generation, we heard the sons of God took the daughters of men, and the commentators make a lot of it and say that the reason the world had to be destroyed was because men took sexual partners without consent, without consideration, without inhibition. And that a world where people do that, where people objectify each other like that and exploit each other like that, does not deserve to stand. And the word that was used there is lakachat, to take. So when Shechem takes Dina, he aligns himself with that, with those people who brought about the destruction of the world. But then comes the word love, post factum, after he rapes her, and tells us, wait a minute, maybe there's the possibility and the promise of redemption. Maybe even a relationship that starts with violence and objectification can become something more. And we see Shechem talking to her, We see communication, more than we saw between Yitzhak and Rivka, by the way. We see um, Shechem asking his father, the king of the land, to go and broker a marriage deal with Yaakov. We see his father come to Yaakov and tell him, let's just have a treaty. You will live with us. We will marry your daughters. Um, You will marry our daughters. It looks like maybe there's redemption. Maybe there's hope for a better Um, future coming even out of this um, horrible beginning. But then we see the king and his son, Hamor and Shechem, go back to their own people to try and convince them to support this uh, peace deal that they're trying to broker with Yaakov's family. And suddenly we see that they were not in earnest because what do they tell their own people? They don't say, oh, that's the right thing to do. We can benefit from it uh, and they can benefit from it. What they say, if we will broker this deal with them, their possession will become, possessions will become our own. In other words, really, it's another act of taking, of objectifying, of looking at other people and not seeing them as other individuals, as a thou that we can encounter and relate to, but rather as an it that we can exploit and take and use. So really, in a sense, when we continue with the story, we see that the word love is not a promise of a better future. It's almost ironic. It's almost um, something to draw our attention to the fact that this is not love, that this is not um, the way to build forward because it's used to mask the same attitude, the same rapacious attitude towards other people, um, just hidden down, just toned down and hidden uh, under beautiful words. You know, a couple of weeks ago, we talked about love as being subversive. Here, we have a slightly different use of love, and that is that love masks the real emotion that's being played out. It's really fascinating, and you know, as we continue to talk about love each week, it's fascinating, troubling, you know, thought-provoking. The fact that love is not only important on its own, and obviously it's important on its own, but it's important for what it does to the story. It subverts the story, and here it masks what we're really trying to get to, the real emotion. 
I would say it's even more than that. I think that um, it's not just masks. It's not, it's not just um, an affectation or a way to make beautiful what is really ugly within, even though it is how I think it appears in this situation. I think it's more than that. I think that in a sense, when we talked about love in our previous uh, conversations, we talked about how, and in our very first conversation, when we talked about Yitzhak and Rebecca, we talked about how to love someone is to embrace their otherness, to force yourself to encounter them, even though they're so, so different from us. And that that also means to embrace the fact that we will have to change that the fact they're so different will force us to grow beyond the limits of how we understand the world and expect things to be at this moment before our encounter and relationship with that other person. In other words, love is a motor, is a power of change, of growth, of transformation. What happens when instead of doing that, you're taking someone? When you're taking someone, you're not only objectifying them, you're not only turning them into a tool of your gratification, you're also cheating yourself out of the opportunity to really encounter someone else and grow out of it. In other words, you're deadening yourself, you're fossilizing yourself. So in a sense, what we see Shem doing here, it's not just horrible in the sense that he's committing a crime against Dina's person and dignity. He is also committing a person against his own selim elokim, against the gift that God gave us all, which is the gift of the ability to grow and become more than we are every day. And this is why it's so dark. This is why the word love here tastes almost like mockery to me, because what it achieves is the opposite. It's not growth. It's a deadening of our ability to grow. When love becomes darkness, it's something to, you know, to recognize in this week's parasha. But again, it allows us to gain even a deeper appreciation of what love is all about. Thank you, Rachel, as always. Thank you so much for joining us. And we look forward to seeing you next week.